Hi everyone, I'm FM Greeno and welcome along to the Greeno Tour, my FM21 European Journeyman save. It's the start of a brand new season here at AS Roma and we have three main things we want to feature on today. Number one, as always, the summer transfer business. Number two, first game of the season, very tricky one, away to AC Milan. And number three, we've got the Champions League draw. That's right, we're in the Champions League this season, straight into the group stage. We're going to find out today who we're going to be playing. Okay, here's that transfer business then. As you can see on the right-hand side, a bazillion people have left the club in one way or another. Mostly youngsters out on loan. A couple of players have gone out for money, but they're nobody who was anywhere near the first team anyway, so no point in focusing on them. Let's have a look at the players who've come into the club, though. Three free transfers to start with. We have Adil Wachiche, who is a French 27-year-old central midfielder. He's valued at £40 million, pounds, having come in on a free from Saint-Étienne. And if you just take a look at his uh, attributes here, he looks like a really solid all-round player. First to play as a playmaker, we're probably going to use him in this Mazzala role. Um, I think he's got everything in his game to make that a real success for us. Next up, um, let's try this guy. A guy you'll all recognise from FC Köln. He was my captain there, Jerome Ongwene. Again, come upon a free transfer. He's 31 years of age now, but still really solid. Take a look at his physicals. Not dropping off at all. His mentals are incredible. And his uh, technicals, in all the areas you want for a centre-half, are pretty decent. I'm not sure he's going to start, but what a great backup option we have there. In terms of people who will start, though, look at this guy. We brought him in from Wolves on a free. 24 years old, 30 caps for England already. Valued at £54 million. This guy is an absolute monster. Look at those physicals. I mean, you would not want to meet him in a dark alley, would you? He would absolutely batter you. His mentals are phenomenal. Look how brave he is. His concentration, his positioning, his work rate. Even his defensive things. Tackling, marking, his heading's pretty good. I mean, there's nothing this guy hasn't got. A real coup to get him on board, I think. He's definitely one of our starters. We were looking for a fullback. Couldn't find anyone in our price range that we really wanted to buy, so I've brought in a loan signing. Met Mulder from Arsenal, Turkish international, almost 75 caps to his name, and he's a really decent option. He can play left back at a push too, he's either footed, so uh, yeah, another really good option to have around. He's probably going to be our starting right back, I'd say. And you can't resist a wonder kid, can you? This guy we've brought in from Dundee United for over £15 million. Pounds. Uh, he's only 19, Northern Irish, already an international with 15 caps to his name. And again, look at his physicals for a 19-year-old. Look at his mentals. Even his technicals, where you want them to be, for the kind of position he's going to play as an advanced forward. I think, I mean, Boadu is going to be first choice up front. But between him and Marky now, as the backup striker, I don't know, it's too close to call. Unfortunately, none of those players we've just signed seem good enough to get into the media dream 11, although Max Grice is listed pretty high in the list of key players. The bookies think we're going to finish sixth, which is probably about fair. Uh, we finished fourth last season. I think we've probably improved a little bit, but of course so will everyone else have done. Pretty close between Napoli, Atalanta and us in terms of the bookies though, for who's going to get that fourth place. The Milan clubs and Juventus seem to be streets ahead of everyone else. Of course, we're travelling to Milan today, take on AC. Let's go and see how we're setting up for that game. No surprises in the way we're setting up. To be honest, the players we've brought in have been bought with this formation in mind. Washish here is going to play in that Metzala role. Grice is going to play centre-half. And Mert Mulder comes in at right-back. So that's three of the new signings straight into the starting eleven. Ongwene and McDade are going to take their place on the bench. Everyone else you'll recognise from last season, of course. Let's get up to Milan and see how we can do in the San Siro. 
So you can see here, Milan lining up with a 4-2-3-1. Quite a narrow looking formation. Uh, so hopefully we can exploit them a little bit in the wide areas. Obviously Mesquita and Trincao are very, very proficient there. And we do have the wingbacks uh, bombing on even. So that could be an area we can exploit. Milan are a strong side though. I'd say they're slated to finish second in the table this year. Not too far off uh, Juventus. So uh, coming up here and getting any kind of result would certainly be uh, a very, very positive start to the season. Overall, I'm fairly impressed with the transfer business we've done this summer. I don't think there's anywhere else we really need to strengthen. The transfer window does come to a close this week, I think. Um, possibly the only area where we could do with a little more cover would be left back. Uh, but it's not urgent. Uh, a couple of our centre-halves can play there at a push. So, yeah, I'm not going to go and spend big money. If I don't really have to, you know. The first real opportunity of the game there for us. Corner nodded over the bar. Had five shots on goal. None on target. Which suggests we're uh, shooting from a little bit too far out. Maybe we'll have to make a little adjustment to the tactics. To take that into account. Milan are building something here. Lauritsen. Oh, he hit that well, didn't he? Goodness me. Mainyan could not get down quick enough to keep that one out. That's a shame. Get a better look at it here. Lauritsen nods the ball down first. Gomez into his path. And he rifled that past Mainyan into the side of the net. 1-0 Milan. Okay, work to be done here then, boys. We currently sit bottom of the table. <laughs> By virtue of the fact we're losing. Okay, that's fair enough. So maybe we're going to change things and, and start working the ball into the box, I think. Like I say, we've had, we've had seven attempts on goal so far now. And only one on target. And that's not really quite good enough, is it? Here come Milan again, building down the right-hand side. Can we get a challenge in on the edge of the box here? No, Calafiori, plenty of space on the left there initially. Grice gets in with a good challenge, though. And here comes Boadu. Has he got the pace to get past Kimpembe? No, he hasn't. The highlight continues, though. Grice gives the ball away to Milan. And it looks like a counter-attack opportunity for them once more. Benasso with a good run down the left-hand flank. Calafiori in. Grice heads clear. It's Traore. Oh, what a finish. Well, well. With those really long highlights, you know something big is going to come at the end of them, don't you? What a great finish this was from Traore. Really kind of firm daisy cutter along the grass. And again, Mainyan a little slow to get down. Perhaps his age is starting to get to him a little bit. Oh dear. Another highlight possibly here. Nope, Mulder clears it up to Boadu. Here's Trincao with plenty of space to run into down the right. Can he get a ball across? He can. And oh, almost an own goal. And it goes out for a corner. Trincao in. Grice nods it over. He's got great jumping reach. Um, he doesn't seem to be getting them quite on target. So that's nine attempts, one on target now. We've got a better XG. But we're 2-0 down. And Yek has picked up a yellow card in midfield as well. So that's not ideal. Some inspirational words are needed at half time. So I think it is going to be us expect to see a better showing. And I think with the tactics, we are going to make that little change to work the ball into the box. We might pull it a little wider due to the way that they're set up. Matt Mulder is injured. Oh, I just noticed that. That's a shame. So who do we have on the bench who can come on for him? I'm not sure we have another right back available. Oh, Meany can play there. Okay, that's fine. Does compromise us a little bit as an attacking force down the right-hand side, though. But we'll see how it goes. Right, second half underway. Let's hope for a little bit more goal mouth action from us this time round. Highlight here starts for Milan. Benasur, Grice wins that pretty easily, but doesn't manage to get it to one of our players. 
Lauritsen again flashes that one wide from 20 odd yards. I don't really think this is going to be much of a barometer for how successful I think our season is going to be. Like I said Milan are one of the two strongest sides and we are playing them away from home. I think in our next game we've got either Juventus or Inter as well. The, the fixture computer has not been kind to us at the start of the season, that's for sure. Another shot goes narrowly wide. Now working the ball into the box basically means we've stopped taking any shots whatsoever. So that's a bit of a problem. I'm going to go and make a couple more changes. Back in a moment. So we've made a bit of a change in formation. We've gone two up top. We've brought young McDade on. Gone to a two-man midfield. Uh, we've also taken uh, Mesquita off, brought Adelphio on because Mesquita was on a 6.2. That is not good enough at this level. It does obviously leave us a little more open in the middle of the park where Milan have got players stacked up. So <laughs> might not be the best move, but we need to try something a little different and we need to try and uh, get a goal as quickly as possible. I think we're even going to go attacking. This might end in a horrible defeat for us, but we'll see. We'll see. Highlight here continuing from that corner from Milan. Oh, no, not anymore, it isn't. <laughs> okay, well, at least we've had a shot now. I think that's our first shot of the second half. I think we need to encourage the boys. Come on. Last few minutes, let's try and get at least a highlight. Something on target. Anything. <laughs> It's not happening, is it? It's not going to be our day today. That's a shame. Oh, well. There we are. First game of the season. It's going to take the new boys a little while to bed in, I guess. It's a 2-0 defeat at AC Milan. Well, we're going to put that defeat behind us now and focus on the Champions League draw. So, we are seeded in the third group of seeds. So, let's go through the, uh, the first lot. Some strong outfits there, obviously. I'm not quite sure what Mujerland have done to get into the top seeds. That's a bit of a strange one. Um, Benfica, probably the weakest of the remaining ones. Everyone else is a bit frightening, aren't they? So let's see who goes into the uh, the second group of seeds there. So which group out of this would we like best? I mean, you'd have to say the group with Mujerland and Herta looks favourite, doesn't it? Ones we'd like to avoid, probably. Uh, PSG and Liverpool, <laughs> that would be one to avoid, I guess. Um, I don't think we can end up in a group with any Italian teams, so that's good. So we avoid the Man City and Juventus group. We avoid Man United and Milan, I suppose. Let's see who we uh, end up with, shall we? We're in this group. So Salzburg end up playing Leipzig. Interesting. A bit of conflict of interest there. Oh, we're in with Benfica and Spurs. It's kind of middle of the road. Not too bad. Certainly worse groups we could have ended up in. And who's going to be the fourth team we end up with? Carvina of the Czech Republic. Okay. So you'd have to say that isn't a bad group. I would think potentially we can qualify out of this group. Um, and certainly we wouldn't be looking to finish last. Carvina have got to be seen as the whipping boys, haven't they? So even if we don't make it out of this, we'd have the Europa League to fall back on. So those Champions League fixtures have slotted into our schedule now. I was right, we have got Juventus up next. So it's a really tough start to the season. Swiftly followed by Tottenham away. Potentially a little easier run of games here. And I think where we're going to come back, let's do the Benfica game, shall we? That seems like a, an interesting game to come back for. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. The game wasn't up to much, was it? But I think the signings we've made, once they bet in, are really going to help drive the club forward. If you did enjoy it, please drop a like on there for me. And if you've got any comments about this episode or the series as a whole so far, I would love to see them below. And don't forget, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, come and hop on the Greeno bus. There is plenty of room for you all. It just remains for me to thank you for watching, and I will see you soon for some more action here with Roma. Bye for now.